In this video, we're going to go over the 3D stereo review tools within Dragon Frame's cinematography workspace. I'm not going to delve into everything you need to learn to shoot 3D. It's just too big of a subject. But I'm going to show you at least what the tools are here to shoot test shots and to look at your footage and make sure that what you're about to shoot is going to work for you in 3D. Again, I'm not going to go over everything you need to know for this setup, but I'm going to go over the basics. And that starts by having two exposures in the camera settings. And you can name them left and right or whatever you want to name them, but, but you need to have two at least. And you need to assign them L and R1. And these assignments, which can be switched by clicking on these buttons, those come from setting up an actual stereo slider in motion control. All of this ties into motion control. And again, that's a whole another can of worms. But in motion control, you create a 3D axis and you can have a left and a right eye. You could have a left and multiple right eyes in case you want to try different IO settings. In this case, I just have one and it's called R1. But often there'll be a L and an R1 and R2, possibly for coverage in case you're not sure how much 3D you want to put into the shot. This process assumes that your left eye is going to be the dominant eye used to make a mono version of your film. Some people will make the right eye be the dominant eye that they make the 2D version of the film from. But in this case, I like to compose thinking that the left eye is the correct composition exactly, and then the right eye moves over to give us 3D information. So that's just how I've worked, and that's how we shot the stop motion for the movie The Little Prince. Let's go back into the cinematography workspace. So we've already assigned our left and right channels appropriately. We've given them exposures. We've locked our exposures right here. So that way, if we're making changes to the look, we make sure to make those changes across left and right. So now that we know that setup, let's dive into the actual review tools. In the middle is a button that says 3D test shot. And the 3D test shot is going to generate a left view and a right view. And again, you have to pick where is this coming from, which exposure. These names, L and R, those are the names of our exposures. It's easy to accidentally leave the right view in the L mode. So this will say L and this will say L because you haven't assigned the right. So even though it seems that shouldn't Dragon know which exposure goes left and which exposure goes right, there's so many configurations in this program. For instance, animated IO where the right or left eye moves. You could actually assign different lighting DMX programs for different channels. So you have to be specific here and assign the exposures that you want for left and right. And now below, this is a little fun cheat we put in. If you type in your IO settings, this is in millimeters, it automatically populates and changes it in the motion control. And this is a really convenient way to test different IOs quickly without having to keep switching which workspace you're in. So right now we have an IO of five millimeters for our R1. I'm gonna hit the 3D test shoot, left eye will shoot, then the camera will move over and then shoot the right. So here we go. So we've shot our 3D test shot and Dragon Frame automatically switched us into a 3D test shot viewing mode, which is a bundled test shot. It has two images in it and it's got the red and blue symbol on it that shows that it's a 3D test shot and it's turned on the 3D test shot viewing mode. There's many different modes. I prefer the anaglyph black and white. You may need to look at it in a different viewing mode. Also, all of our 3D in Dragon Frame can be viewed on a 3D television or a 3D projector, you know, with the glasses and all that. So we've shot our image and you can see the differences, the left and right by the blue and the red. When you set your IO, the distance between your left eye and your right eye, that's establishing the amount of 3D depth in the scene. But it's not saying whether the images are in front of the screen or behind the screen. That's set up by a post process called convergence. Convergence simply slides the right view over the left. That sets whether your subject matter is, again, in front of the screen, at the screen level, or behind the screen. And an easy way to think about this, if we blow up this first image here and we look at how much difference we have, if we put this so there's no difference between the left image and the right image by sliding the convergence of the right eye, that will place this particular part of the image at the screen level. Okay, so often in movies, the character will be at the screen level, and so they will put like their features, their eyes, their nose, right on top of each other, and then that pushes these objects here back into the screen. 
Now before we measure the amount of 3D in this shot, which we have tools here to, to measure that, let's shoot another one for comparison. So this was a 5 millimeter I.O. Let's go with a 3 millimeter I.O. So I'm going to change that to 3 and then shoot another test shot. Let's go ahead and pick our second shot and affect its convergence. Now you can see the, the front is lined up pretty evenly, but the back is very minimal amount of 3D. If you take the closest object and you neutralize it, so there's no difference between the left and the right, then the amount that the furthest object is different, that will give you a good idea of the overall amount of 3D in the shot. Let's actually measure that. We're going to turn on this measuring tool here. It looks like a little eye beam split in half, this icon. And now you have these calipers that measure vertically on the screen. And you can also blow this up. Dragon frame will track with this as you blow it up. We can see in this 3D test shot, there's very little 3D, only 0.3% difference back here between the left eye and the right eye for this furthest object back. And now if we switch over to the first shot we did, you can see with the 5 millimeter I.O. that we get a little bit more. This also tells us that we have an 11 pixel difference. But these 11 pixels aren't the pixels of the screen and they're not the pixels of the image we shot. They're actually a calculation based on what your comp is. So this particular comp is set at 2K. If we say, oh, we're doing 4K comps, this would be 22 pixels. And the reason for this is that I noticed that working with teams on 3D projects, that everyone wanted to talk in the same pixel values. Even though the compositors were working in one resolution and on stage you're working with whatever the camera resolution is, everyone wanted to say, oh, we're 10 pixels over, or it's a 20 pixel difference. And so this keeps it so that you can speak the same language as your post team. Now, some of you might say, why you know, 3D is usually the distance between the eyes. Why are you shooting two millimeter or three millimeters and five millimeters? And that's because when you deal in miniature, the general rule is if you were to shrink a human into your set and whatever that scale would be, and then calculate what the difference between the eyes would be, that's actually the distance you want to shoot miniatures at, not at human scale. It would be too far apart. It's like sticking your face into a miniature. It's like you're crossing your eyes to look at things. So that's why those numbers are so small. One of the tool suggestions that came from the great stop motion production company Leica was this tool. Their camera team liked to shift back and forth with this tool. And so we added that in to our 3D stereo review tools. Another interesting tool here is what's called edge float. So here's the convergence. We've gone over that. Now we have this thing called edge float. And what that is for is a very specific problem that comes up in 3D. If you have an object that's on the edge of frame, it doesn't have to be subject. It could be just like a box over here or uh, edge of a wall. And if it's closer to the camera than the subject matter and appears to be in front of the screen, sometimes it looks better to make the screen actually look like this edge is pulled out in front of the real screen. And usually as a viewer, you don't notice this. You don't see that the screen is pulled out. But what it does is it creates less of a chance of your eye getting distracted by maybe like a little highlight that's on in the left eye but off in the right eye. And you do that here by moving this edge float like this here. I'll pull it really far. You would never do this much. Usually it's just a small amount. And this will give you the illusion of the edge float while you're using your anaglyph glasses. This is often used with live action films that are shot in 3D and they're trying to kind of make it easier on your eyes. It's also used in many Disney films that are translated into 3D. I've noticed that some stop motion studios don't like to use edge float, so they just avoid anything on the edges of the screen that might be coming forward, but that's what edge float is. These tools, convergence and edge float, do not get applied to what you shot. Like we don't actually shift your right eye images over or we don't try to get in front of the post process because we know that on a big feature or even on a short film you're going to want to make these decisions of convergence and edge float, the final decisions in your post production process on a big screen and these are just simply here so that you can see that everything is working. As far as the viewing mode for anaglyph, some people use green and magenta glasses and maybe if for some reason you have 
red cyan, but they're flopped. We have a cyan red and we have a magenta green in case that's flopped. These other modes of viewing we made simply accessible right up here in this menu. So that's for adjusting your anaglyph. Hopefully this explains the 3D stereo review tools and hope you have fun shooting some 3D.